Hi, I'm Jose Abel, civil engineer, and here we're doing another quick video on the consequences of AI, or the AI revolution to teaching finite elements and other classes probably. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, please uh, give me a follow. I'll, I'll expect to be uh, talking about this uh, way more, how I'm using the AI to speed up my teaching, uh, my students, how they're using it for learning, and my day-to-day -day stuff that I do for my research and uh, my academic life. So uh, when you pay for ChatGPT+, you get access to three AIs. You get the default GPT 3.5, you get the legacy GPT 3.5, and you get GPT 4. So legacy 3.5 was the uh, ChatGPT you were using last week. Uh, theoretically the one uh, before the update last Tuesday on Pi Day and then you get an updated version of that which is called GPT 3.5 and you can see the difference between these two is specifically the speed the speed of the new one is much faster but it also gets a little boost in conciseness and then GPT 4 is slow but it has a lot of reasoning and a lot of conciseness so it should be much better so what I want to do is program this uh, 10 node tetrahedron and I'm asking it uh, to do exactly that with a, with a really bad prompt. By the way, uh, this PDF file I have here is uh, the textbook by Carlos Felipa, a famous professor from UC uh, University of Colorado Boulder uh, that has excellent notes of fine, on find elements. So uh, I asked the three AIs to program and find an element for that. So my experience before the update, before the update, I would ask the, the AI to generate this find an element and it would say no, this is a complex task for me, I can't uh, do that right now and gave me a series of steps on how could I achieve that but it didn't actually write any code. So uh, here we go, uh, let's see the first one. This should be the result uh, for, okay, so for the legacy chat GPT. So the prompt was, can you please give me a Python function that returns a stiffness matrix for a 10 node tetrahedron finite element in isotropic elasticity. Really bad prompt actually, not right, not very precise, not very well written, but it, I was surprised that it actually gave me a function because it used to be that it didn't. So it started writing a function and uh, sure, here's a Python function that returns a different matrix for, okay, and here we go. And uh, I immediately saw that it's getting the number of nodes from the input nodes. So this is actually not writing a function for an element. It was writing a function for uh, a, a mesh or trying to assemble something. So I realized that and then I went, okay, no, I just want the function for one element. And uh, it goes, sure, here's a function that returns the stiffness matrix for a single 10 node tetrahedron fighter element. And I go in here and this is closer to what I want but we can see that, uh, okay, so the size of the stiffness matrix is okay, but the shape functions are incorrect. The material, th this is probably right, I haven't gone through and checked it, but when it's doing the actually asse actual assembly of the stiffness matrix, it's okay. So this is a code that you can start working with, uh, but it's wrong in, 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 its, in the shape functions. You can see the shape functions here from the uh, from the nodes, they have nothing to do. So N1, it it's actually doesn't even have the 10 shape functions that you should have and the values that you have there are all wrong. So then we, I asked uh, GPT 3.5. So this is 3.5 version, the updated version that is faster. So it was significantly faster. And uh, it gave me something that it's still wrong. And uh, it's, it has a different structure from before. It gave me a nice example. Th these coordinates are, are correct. It's you would want to try out this element with the coordinates that look like this, like it's a, like a unit tetrahedron element. And then you can see that as far as the shape functions, uh, the B matrix, the inverse, yeah, it's doing. I don't know what it's doing here, but it's not correct. Okay, so no D matrix. So this is all wrong. This doesn't even give you a, a close enough structure of the code. Uh, that you can start working on. I think the previous one actually gave a, a better approximation for the... So you could s start out with this one. This is the legacy, right? Legacy GPT. You can start out with this one and this one will get you closer to what you want. But then I went to Chat GPT 4. Chat GPT 4, or actually it's still Chat GPT, but the, the training model is GPT 4. And now you can see a few changes. Uh, first of all, it gives a, a longer introduction. So a 10 node tetrahedral finite element is a quadratic tetrahedral finite element, also known as a TET-10. 
used to model three-dimensional solid mechanics problems. The stiffness matrix for such an element. Okay, here we go. And then right off the bat, if you start analyzing the code, it's, spl it's splitting the, the function into subtasks, which is interesting. You don't really need to do this. It's uh, computing the stiffness matrix for a tetrahedron element is kind of a linear task. But in the con if, if you were you know, having several uh, different types, uh, number of Gauss points, uh, in, or integration rules that you want to implement, you might find this structure a bit more useful or a, a bit more modular that can get you different features going. So I, right off the bat, that surprised me a little bit. You can see the Gauss point integration rule. I, I haven't reviewed it. Uh, I think the, the, the location of the Gauss points are fine. The weights, I think, were not fine in this case. But you can see the first thing is the B matrix. B matrix has the structure. The structure is fine. Uh, the derivatives of the shape functions are wrong. Those are not correct. The shape functions, I have them right here. So for example, n1, I would differentiate with respect to this uh, variable zeta1, and I would get uh, something like uh, 2 or, or 4 zeta1. And, and this, this is not making any sense. So it's just ones and minus ones. This, these are quadratic functions, so they are not going to be constant. So that's one thing I see. And then the Jacobian matrix, uh, it's using, again, for some reason, it's computing the d zetas, and then multiplying those uh, with, uh, with the coordinates. So that's fine to, to build the Jacobian. And then uh, it's computing the 6x6 the the six six, uh, material co uh, constitutive matrix. It stopped right here after uh, uh, maybe three minutes. So I, I would go continue. Some people and myself included, uh, try to be polite to the AI. It will say continue please or something like that. You don't need that. You can just go continue. It's a machine. No need to be polite with it. Uh, unless, unless they take over that, you're going to start thinking about being polite. But I don't think it's going to make any, any difference if you're polite to uh, uh, the singularity, right? Okay. Uh, so it continued it from the previous matrix. It finished it up. And then the way it's going to compute the, the, okay, so with the module, the nice thing about the modular approach is that then it's very compact when you want to do the looping to assemble the matrix. So you get the Jacobian, you get the inverse, you get the determinant, uh, compute the B matrix, and then you do B transpose D B times the determinant of J. I am missing the weights here. The weights are not there, and it's, uh, it's something that it needs to go there, but it's much closer to what you need uh, if you want to implement this. And then it gives an example as before, and that's fine. So then I told it, but your shape functions are wrong, and it started apologizing. I think it should apologize to us for this. It's, it's, it's nice that it is polite to us, but not the other way around. It just uh, shows you what the proper hierarchy here is. Uh, I apologize for the confusion. You're correct, the shape functions were incorrect. So okay, so now, now I see some fours there, and I, I, I wanted a four there, but I don't see. <laughs> so the psi, eta, and zeta are taking the place of the zeta one through four in, in Felipe's notebook, but I don't think these are correct either. These don't look fine. In the B matrix, uh, this structure is okay. I think it, and it's using this function up here to to compute that. That's fine. The Gauss points. I was surprised it uh, actually upgraded the integration rule to something like a 10 by 10 integration rule. I haven't checked those values, uh, but that was surprising to me that it did that upgrade. Maybe because it realized that the derivatives were higher order functions. It needed a higher order Gauss integration rule. Uh, it's not really right. You, you would be fine with the previous integration rule. So the one that it was using here, uh, apart from the weights uh, that were missing, uh, there was nothing wrong with it. And then the Jacobian, and then it messes up. Oh, this didn't finish. Okay, so with this in mind, I, I don't want to finish uh, this function. Uh, what I do want to discuss is a bit of the consequences. So you can see that uh, GBT4 actually provides uh, higher quality code, and you can prompt it a little bit more and have it fix some things without you having to type. I could probably go in and say, okay, continue, and then please fix uh, the Gauss integration rule. You're missing the weights. These kind of things. I've seen people use the AI in this way to get actually something that works. So my main problem right now with this is that uh, it's performing tasks that I'm asking my students to do. So 
my students would have to code maybe not this element, but uh, maybe the six node triangle or the nine node quad element, so higher order elements. And I think this AI should be able to do that for them. The, this tetrahedron is a significantly um, more complex element. So my problem with that is not that my students are going to be using it for that. That's fine for me. Uh, and I actually uh, encourage them to show me how they use ChatGPT to do their homeworks. My problem is that not all of them can pay for GPT+. Plus. So what that means is some of my students will have this awesome AI that can provide a, an answer that's much closer to what they need, while others will be forced to use uh, GPT 3.5, giving them an answer that is farther away, uh, pretty much not, not, not very usable. So this is, this is a concern in AI. Uh, as we move forward, uh, there's going to be different AIs for different things, with different, you're going to be paying for these things, and different people are going to be able to afford different things. So you'll have people with abilities to perform tasks using AI uh, that's going to depend on how much they can pay for these things. These, this is a big concern for me right now on, on this AI uh, revolution that we have ongoing. And there, there's some other ones, uh, you know, regarding, regarding uh, ethics of using this for doing your work. Uh, I'm fine with that. I, I trust my students that they will be using it for, for good to, to improve their learning and improve their uh, it's not much of a big deal. We, we, in academia, we need to get used to this thing being here and we need to ask the questions, the proper questions and, and in the proper settings to do things. So for example, this is going to boost, definitely going to boost the in-presence uh, examination. So using tools like Canvas or remote, uh, remote tools for assessing your students' knowledge, it's going to be less valuable now because you, you have ChatGPT which can do these things and more things. Uh, so we're going to value more in in person human relationships, and that I think that's a good thing actually. We're and and the whole idea behind these new tools and and what we develop them for, eventually is to free up time for us to do the things that we really want to do, which is uh, search for truth, have uh, have discussions uh, or have relationships with it, with our friends, uh, spend time with our family and uh, enjoy this type of work, so finite elements, for the sake of it, for, because it's beautiful. And uh, I think this uh, can help us get to a point where we, we can do the, the menial tasks that, that we, need to, we need to do it faster and then get out of the way and let us enjoy uh, the beauty and truth and the family relationships in a more efficient way. So that's a long way of saying that this is cool, uh, we're not quite there yet. And, uh, if you like this kind of content and you have some ideas you'd like me to try out, please uh, mention them in the chat. Or if you have some other questions regarding this, and uh, uh, please, please mention them there and give a like. Uh, please subscribe and uh, just let me know uh, if you like this type of content. So until next time, I'm Jose Abel. Ciao.